what the Indian cricket board wants, the person the Indian cricket board wants in general terms is not necessarily what is good for the team or what the team wants and vice versa, what the team wants for whatever reason may not be what the board is looking for. So we need, we need to have a very clear sort of uh, set of rules, so, so to say, where you know that this is what the board expects from the coach, this is what uh, the, the deal is in terms of uh, uh, how, how, how the uh, board reacts to a coach, his success, what, what they mean by success. And uh, it's, it's in important increasingly I notice that uh, the Indian players are, tend to be uh, it, it might be a, it might be a very Indian thing. It might be a cultural thing. It might be a thing of temperament. But increasingly, it's very difficult for a coach to coach the Indian team, national team. And the reason is this: the reason is that uh, you either have players who who think they are above that kind of thing, or you have a problem with the coach himself who thinks that it's best that he keeps his mouth shut and picks up his money and and lets things go and. After a while, India will win a few matches at home anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So what the board needs to do is to sit down with the coach, sit down with the players and say, this is what we're looking for, this is the kind of person we want, and this is what we expect from the person. And also, most important, give the coach the confidence and the backing that he would require even if he makes unpopular decisions. Unpopular in terms of either personnel or, or warning a player or dropping a player. I think increasingly we are looking at a coach uh, with, the, with the power of a football coach if it has to really succeed because then you have a single point uh, a, a single point which is the responsibility uh, uh, sorry a responsible person and that's that's important and I think it's a bit it's all a bit hazy and vague right now and that's that's part of the problem and the and the question that is always asked is that uh, why why can't we have a national coach why can't we have an Indian who's a national coach now interestingly enough in uh, at least in the last 20 years or 25 years, this is not a question that has been asked by the players. This has invariably been asked by former players who, who want the job of the national coach. And that's not really worked because I think there's a certain uh, element of uh, either over-familiarity or its exact reverse which seems to work against the Indian coach. I think as things stand now, it would make, I think, I think for example, Sanjay Banga is an excellent coach and I think B. Arun has done an uh, excellent job at the junior level. But can you really see them as national coaches? Although that should be the next step, that should be the natural progression. They've, they've, done, their, they've done their sort of tours of duty, they've, they've, they've been successful. I think you either decide what the coach wants and give him the powers or you, or you just sort of continue in this sort of uh, neither here nor there manner in which the coach is sometimes an important element of the team and at other times he can be made to shut up. And part of the reason that India has had this problem, especially of late, is that we had a great chapel who was uh, a bit uh, uh, voluble and uh, uh, very clear about what he wanted and what he said. And I think he also tended to play one up against the other. And at the other extreme, we have Duncan Fletcher, who, who just doesn't seem to <coughs> seem to be involved to the extent of watching, for example, Indian players in the local tournaments. So I think, and and in, and in, in Greg's in Greg Chapel's case, and Greg Chapel is a is a is a fabulous theoretician on the game. He has a problem perhaps with man management, and this is not this is not unusual. It is well known even in Australia, and it was shown again when he went back to a, a, a position of power in Australia. But uh, that is that is not the if that is not the answer, neither is the Duncan Fletcher kind where you don't really have a, 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 a sort of ease of communication. And and I think the the person who bridged the sort of this divide between these two extremes was perhaps Gary Kirsten, uh, who got along well with the players. The players respected him. He had a very good international record. And I think those are the elements you should look at. I think, I think you should look at the elements of the more successful coaches that India have had. And I think Gary Kirsten fits that bill. And Gary was successful because he, he, was, he was a good communicator. He got along well with the players. He knew exactly, he knew his game. He knew, he knew cricket. He had had a fabulous uh, international record. And he was also part of the, uh, he, he also understood the Indian system, which was important. Well, the argument is that so did John Wright. John Wright understood the Indian system. 
but John Wright understood the Indian system to the extent that he knew how to play it and he, he was sort of uh, willing to bend uh, whichever way the sort of wind blew. Uh, these are, I know, harsh things to say about people who have, who have been in positions of command, but uh, there's a lovely story in, in John Wright's book where he says that when he came back from a, from a tour where India had done well, the board would send him a limousine to pick him up. And when he came back from a, from a tour where India had done badly, he had to find his own taxi cab at the airport. So this is the way, this is the, way the board treats the coaches. They have treated Indian coaches badly, they have treated Venkatesh Prasad and Robin Singh badly. So there, there's been, there has been a lack of consistency. What they have done now with Ravi Shastri, for example, in my book, Ravi fits the bill in many ways because he, he knows his stuff, he, he's, he's a tough taskmaster, he's a very positive individual, he knows his cricket and he's been in touch with cricket, with the cricket of today. Sometimes what happens is you, you appoint a coach who's not in touch with the cricket of today. He might have been a great player in the 20, 30 years ago, but, but the game has moved on so much that it's, 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 it's a completely different game today. And you need somebody who's either retired recently or someone who's been traveling with the team. And I think Ravi, Ravi fits that bill uh, easily. And I think it's also, it's also a changing sort of thing within the Indian mindset. I, I, had, I had a cricketer tell me this once a couple of years ago, uh, this business of telling uh, the, the coach telling the players come and speak to me, I would like to you know talk, talk let, let's have a talk and let's you know you tell me your problems, let's discuss this, that sort of thing. And, and, and he said, uh, but I was hesitant because today he's, he's the national coach telling me this. Tomorrow he coaches Australia, day after tomorrow he coaches England and he might carry things, he might use the stuff I have told him against me on a cricket field. So there is also a bit of lack of trust. So these are, these are the things that the board has to uh, work through uh, before, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy job to pick a national coach. Uh, so it's not really a choice between an Indian coach or a foreign coach. I think it's a choice, of, uh, it's, it's a choice really between having a coach who understands these elements and one who sort of wings it 